Hello everyone, this is Jawad Ahmad from Medical Lectures by JD and in this continuation of videos on the parasitology, today we will be covering the parasites of the class Zoomas Digophora. So, let's have a start. First of all, before going to directly to the Zoomas Digophora, a brief overview or the previous videos. So, we have divided the parasites into the protozoa and metazoa on the basis of the cellularity. So, if they are unicellular, we have placed them into the protozoa and if they are multicellular, so we have placed them into the metazoa. Now, the unicellular protozoans are further divided on the basis of their organelle of locomotion into class Rhizopoda that have pseudopodia as their organ of locomotion uh, or organelle of locomotion. The second class is class Zoomestigophora, which today we are going to study the parasites of which class. So, that is the class Zoomestigophora and they move with the help of flagella. flagella. You will see that these organisms have flagella and they move with the help of flagella. The third class is class Ciliata or Ciliates that move with the help of cilia. And the last one is the class Tilospora that don't have any organ of locomotion. So starting from here, class Rhizopoda, we are taking the parasites one by one and we are covering all of these. Now, uh, the metazoa. The metazoans are further classified on the basis of their body structure. So if they have flat bodies, then we have placed them into the platyhelminthes. And if they have rounded bodies, we have placed them into the nematyhelminthes. Now, so thus they are flat worms and round worms. Now the flat worms are further divided on the basis of their body structures into tapeworms and flukes. Now the tapeworms these have segmented bodies, whereas the flukes they have leaf-like bodies. So we will cover, we will be covering the parasites of each and every class of this uh, whole uh, scheme. So we are covering each one of them. So today we will be covering the class Zoomestigophora or the flagellates. Let's have a start. First of all, as Always, we will cover the general properties of this class or general characteristic of this, which will be present in each and every of this, uh, every parasite of this organism, so that it is easier for the organism or the parasite to study. So, first of all, its general characteristic. The first of all is it's that they are unicellular. Unicellular means that these organisms, uh, since they are protozoans, so they will be unicellular. That is, of course, uh, easier. The second thing is that they have spherical or cylindrical shaped bodies. Now. We have studied in the class I may be the previous class that they have uh, undefined shape and they have no definite shape shape. But over here, these organisms, as you will see shortly, that they have either a cylindrical or a spherical body. So that's its second property. The th third thing is that they move with the help of flagella. So as their name indicates, they are zooflagellates, or they are also class, uh, called as class flagellata. So uh, flagellata. So they have flagella. The next thing is that they have a single central nucleus. We have studied in the class Amoeba that they may have four nuclei, but over here they have a single central nucleus in all of these its morphological form. The next thing is that they are also called as zooflagellata. This uh, class is also called as zooflagellata. So these are its general characteristics. You can see over here in this picture. First of all, it's a unicellular. It has a cylindrical body. You can see over here. Then uh, over here you is a central nucleus. And over here you can see a free flagellum or uh, with the help of which it will move. So in the direction of the cilia, in the direction of the flagella, it will move. So this is its general characteristics. The next thing is that this class includes the blood parasites as well as the intestinal parasite. So among the blood parasite, we will be studying the leishmania as well as uh, tr uh, trypanosoma. The leishmania and trypanosoma, whereas on the other hand, in the intestinal parasite, we will be covering Giardia and Trichomonas. So, the Giardia and Trichomonas are included in, in the intestinal parasites of this class, whereas among the blood parasites, uh, we include the Trypanosoma and Leishmania. And uh, in this video, we will be mainly covering the Trypanosoma. So, let's have a start. First of all, uh, before going directly to the Trypanosoma, first of all, the morphology of this class altogether. Now, we, uh, in other videos, we usually take the morphology of each and every parasite separately. But over here, the morphology of each and every parasite of this class is almost the same. So, we will describe it generally as a whole so that later on it will be easier for you to cover the parasites and their morphology. So, first of all, what is the, what is the importance in knowing this morphology? It is important because it will help you in diagnosing these parasites in the blood, blood smears or in any way. So in the diagnosis of these parasites, this morphology has to be remembered because you will know that this is this parasite and this uh, parasite looks like this and this parasite looks like this. So as a result of this, you will be able to uh, 
diagnose the parasite. So first of all, first of all is its AMST goat farm. So in a what does AMST goat farm? AMST goat farm is you can see over here. This is circular farm. So it is around or oval in shape as you can see, and it has a central nucleus and it doesn't have any flagella. Around or oval in shape, central nucleus and doesn't have any flagella. And over here you can see it is a kinetoplast. So this structure will be present in each and every one of it over here, this kinetoplast. So this kinetoplast is actually a uh, DNA complex. So this is a DNA complex we have to remember. And now, sorry, it is a mass of the mitochondrial DNA. It's a mass of mitochondrial DNA. So uh, this you have to remember. Now the next thing, the next form that you will see that most parasites live in of this class is the promestic goat form. Now in the promestic goat form, you can see it is a cylindrical shape form. The central nucleus and the kinetoplast is placed anteriorly. How will you define its anterior and posterior end? So anterior end is in uh, the direction in which this parasite will swim. So that is its anterior end and the other end is its posterior end. So this parasite, this promestic goat will uh, swim in this direction, in this flagella direction. So this is its anterior end whereas over here is its posterior end. So the kinetoplast will be present in its anterior end and there will be a flagella present. Moreover, uh, there is no undulating membrane. You will see, I will discuss, describe the undulating membrane shortly. But over here just remember that it has a central nucleus, anterior kinetoplast and a flagella. The next thing, the next morphological form is the epimestic goat. Now the epimestic goat, what does uh, this morphological form, features of the, this morphological uh, form is that they have cylindrical body as you can see, a central nucleus and the kinetoplast is placed near the nucleus. You can see <coughs> that the kinetoplast is placed near the nucleus. Moreover, the flagella is placed anteriorly and there is an undulating membrane. Now, what is the undulating membrane? The undulating membrane is actually a lateral expansion of the plasma membrane. This is the lateral, es um, lateral expansion of the plasma membrane and it is usually associated with the flagella. It connects the flagella with the body of this parasite. So, this is just the lateral expansion of the membrane and as this parasite swim as a result uh, folds of this membrane are formed so that's why it is called as undulating membrane so this in this epimestic goat form a central nucleus kinetoplast is placed near the nucleus and there is a flagella anteriorly and there is an undulating membrane and this undulating membrane is shorter as compared to the tripomestic goat you will see that now in a tripomestic goat again the cylindrical shaped body a central nucleus now the kinetoplast is placed posteriorly. This is its feature. You have to remember this. The kinetoplast over here is placed posteriorly. Whereas in all the three forms, you can see over here it is placed anteriorly. Over here it is placed anteriorly. Over here it is anteriorly but near the nucleus. And over here in the tripomestic form, it is placed posteriorly. Moreover, the flagella you can see and it has a very large undulating membrane. You can see. So the different forms we have studied first of all we have studied the amst goat form circular and oval in shape and the kinetoplast placed anteriorly and no flagella second we have studied the promestic goat form kinetoplast placed anteriorly but there is no undulating membrane third we have studied the epimestic goat form now in the epimestic goat form the kinetoplast is placed near the nucleus and there is a short undulating membrane and in the tropomestic goat form there is a kinetoplast which is placed posteriorly and it has a long undulating membrane now the next form is the metacyclic form now the metacyclic form is you will see you will study that metacyclic tropomestic goat or something like that so it is actually the above uh, four uh, above four morphological form but it is usually smaller so when it is a little bit smaller than other morphological forms we use the term metacyclic form uh, say for example you will see in the treponosoma that there is metacyclic tropomestic goat so you just remember that so these are the morphological form that you will see in the life cycle of all the parasites of this class so let's 